All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install fog lights in your Chevy Silverado. The first thing you're gonna need is this headlight switch right here. You can see it has the fog light button here. Now, this fog light button, when I press it, you see the indicator comes on up there and it comes off. So the computer does not need to be reprogrammed for this. You can see what the old switch looks like here. It's got everything the same except this is chrome now and you have a fog light button here instead. There won't be any additional wiring for you to have to do. It's simply just plug and play right in this section. To get this panel off, I usually just grab it up here at the top, grab behind this ridge, and it pops out. And you can see in the back of this panel, I'll go to the other one real quick. You have these sections right here that hold it in. You just press those, push those out with like a flathead screwdriver, kind of pry them and pull this out. It's kind of tricky if it's your first time, but it's not too hard to do. But then once you have your new switch installed, you just press it in and you just plug it in. Now to reinstall your panel, I just get the bottom lip put back on and press down here to fit that air vent back where it goes. You press around all the edges, including down in here. And there you go. That's all back together. Then test your switch. Make sure the indicator comes on up here and test everything else like the parking lights. Just make sure everything works. Next, we're gonna pop the hood. Next thing we're gonna do is disconnect the ground on the battery, just to make sure nothing happens when we're dealing with the electrical stuff. And it's just simply a 10 millimeter wrench. And my battery is located back here on the passenger side up close to the cab. Now we're moving up to near the brake booster on the other side of the engine bay. And we're gonna be working in this junction box right here. First, you're gonna remove the cover. All you do is you just pull out on this side to get it over these little tabs and just pull up and off. It's really simple. Now I'm gonna set that out of the way. Next, you have these two gray handles. So you can see they're locked down where they are right now. What you have to do is for each one, there are tabs on both sides out here by the handle. You just pull out on the tabs and you see the little uh, nubs right here sticking out, you just have to slip those over the tabs. So then these are free. So do that on both sides. So basically to get these off, you have them starting in down position. I'm gonna pull it all the way up and kind of press this side of the box up and you see the handle move. And you're gonna do that until it slips over the little knob down there. So do the same for this side. And now you rotate them back out to get that to come off. And now there's still wires connected to this. So just kind of set it off to the side like that. And here you can see the little knobs I was talking about that goes in these. So it starts off in here and once you get it up to a certain point about right there, you have to kind of lift up on the side. I lift it up right around here. Just lift it up enough to get it down into this section and then it'll rotate back out and slip off. So you see here, this is under your junction box where all your fuses are and everything. You have all these plugs. We're not gonna touch any of these plugs except for this one. So to get this one out, usually I just take a flathead screwdriver. Once I have my flathead screwdriver, I'm gonna kinda stick it in here. Pry out red clips on both sides. Just stick it in there to loosen those up. Try not to break any plastic. Okay, so once you have those loosened, you'll see there's little tabs down in here. See if it'll focus. Right here at the tip of the screwdriver. You have to push those in with the screwdriver on all four corners and pull this up over them. Okay, so like I said, I'm just gonna push that in on all four corners. One by one. And there, 
I've got it popped off. And the more that I've done this, I've kind of realized it's not a complete necessity to pop these red tabs out. But for some people, it may make it easier. I don't know. I think these red tabs may have more something more so to do with holding these little wires in here. Okay, so we have the plug free, and I also loosen this clamp right here. It's really simple to do. You just stick a flathead screwdriver in that little spot and kind of twist it, you know, to open it up. So now we have the plug loose and free. We're gonna take it out. And you're gonna turn it like this. Kind of stick it back in there. This is just so you can see what you're doing better. Stick it back in that way. And you'll see this black wire I have right here. I've already done this install, um, but I'm just showing how to do it. You see right there above the green wire in this plug, I have the black wire shoved in there. Now you can order a fog light wiring harness for this, which comes with a purple wire that will go up in the same spot and it has one of these plugs. As you can see, I kind of just rigged it for now and shoved that wire up in there and used a pick tool and kind of curled it around that lip in there uh, so that the wire would stay up in there but it still makes contact. Now a way that you can verify that this will work for you is check this diagram on the top of your junction box cover. You'll see for me right here number 28 is fog lamp. So I go up here and look Fog lamp relay, that's the fog lamp fuse. So then I look at the top of my junction box right here. That's the fog lamp fuse, that's the fog lamp relay. And basically, it's these right here, up in here. And the one we're making contact with is this one right here, this upper corner. So that's why it's that plug right there. After you do that, you're gonna you know, tuck, if, if you got the harness, then you leave it. It comes with the plastic shield. For me, I'm going to cut this electrical tape and put the wire into this um, shield or coating right here and then tape it back up. Either way is fine. So now, as you can see, I've got that tucked in there and got it all taped up. You see, it just comes right back out right here. And I have that on because I didn't finish last night. So all you're going to do press this back down in there just close that clamp back up just like that and now we're gonna put this back on so to do that you want to get these aligned maybe about right there just wherever you can see that it's gonna go back on to those tabs I showed earlier also make sure that your wiring right here comes into this kind of loop in the plastic box. Same with this side. So you set it back down in there and you can see now where these need to be. In fact, actually this one has to get tucked under that support right there. So now flip it back up and you can see, look down in there and see where those little uh, tabs are and get these hooked on, push them. This side came off, so now I've got to redo that. That's just simple fix right there. So now make sure all four are on, push them in, and then push them back out and it locks in. It's not going anywhere. Then we're gonna take this box, and this one can be kind of tricky to install. I install this side first for the most part and then you're gonna have to come around the back and watch these tabs, the locking tabs that were for those handles. Slip it over those tabs and put it down so it locks on these right here and then push down on this side. And that's back on. So now you're gonna uh, carefully reconnect your ground post on your battery. Let's go inside and then put your key in. Turn it to the ACC position, which is accessory. Then you're going to press your fog light button 
and I, you may not be able to see it, but the indicator's uh, lit up on the dash. So now we're gonna go back over here. And as you can see, when you turn it on and there's no lights on, usually just the parking lamps come on. So we're gonna come back up here and I have my wire. And what you're gonna need to test it is a test light, or you can do it with a multimeter, it's the same way. Uh, I find the test light just easier for simple jobs like this. And now, so we saw that it's on in the cab, now you're just gonna poke this wire and you see we do have 12 volts. So now I'm gonna go turn it off, poke it in the same place, wiggle it around to make sure, and as you can see, we no longer have 12 volts. So that means that we did tap into the, wire, or the fog light position correctly, so that's all right, and we're getting a good connection all the way down. Also, just in case anyone was wondering, I grounded my test light right here on the engine. Um, it says, G and D right there, which stands for ground too, if you're jumping it off or something. Now this next part is where you kind of make it your own. And there's two, two kind of, well, there's a couple special things about this. One, if you did buy the fog light wiring harness, you're gonna run it down there um, in the instructions that probably come with the harness. You're gonna run it down and the plug should come out down there near where the parking light harness comes out you can't really see it on the camera and when you order the uh, fog light harness it's going to have the two wires one that goes across to this bumper cap and one to this bumper cap now what you're going to have to do is if you want the oem headlights you're going to have to order you can order kits with everything included including the headlight switch but it comes with bumper caps and fog lights if you want to do it this way, which is probably a little cheaper, you're just going to have to order the bumper caps, which is just this section right here, this chrome piece, um, and the fog lights. But the way that I'm doing it, I'm not going to show how to install that because that's not what I'm doing. I am adding a 20 inch light bar in place of fog lights, and I'm going to put it down in here. Okay. So, if you're using this single wire, you're going to have to add another wire or you're going to have to tap off of it. Tap, yeah, add a tap right here for this light and then run the rest of the wire over for that light on the bumper cap. That's if you want the OEM fog lights. Or if you want to put your own fog lights, you know, somewhere down in here, go get you a pair from Harbor Freight. Same thing. If you are doing what I'm doing more so with a single light bar, you're just gonna run this wire wherever you want it, wherever you're mounting your light bar. For me, I'm running it down in here. So I'm gonna run that wire down into here. This is your positive wire. So it's gonna connect to this red one. Black obviously is your ground. I, this is not black, but, or this is black, but this is my positive. To, to add the ground, um, for the factory fog lights, your ground would be in one of these bolts for the uh, radiator support. And I'll pop this cover off real quick and uh, show you more so how I'm wiring it and mounting it. To pop this cover off, you have all these plastic clips right here. To get them off, you're going to need two flathead screwdrivers. Make sure they're not super big, but small enough to fit in here. And you will see two kind of sections in there that's further down. You're just gonna stick one screwdriver in each section and then pry up on this middle part. And I'll, once I get this off, I'll show you more in detail how to do that. All right, so now I've got them started pulling this off and now you can see these two ridges right here is where you stick the screwdriver under. So that's all the way down, and you just stick one screwdriver under each of these, and on both of them just pry up, and it pulls that little tab up and out. And as you can see right here, that some of them will come all the way out, some of them will still stay in, it doesn't matter. You just pop that up, and try not to lose those clips when they fly out, but you just pop up at every single clip. Okay, so now we got all the clips out. We're gonna move this cover out of the way. 
And now you see down in here, just right on top of that rubber mat, I guess you'd call it, is where this light bar is gonna go. Although I'm trying to decide also if I would like to mount it behind the grill instead. But once again, that's custom to my own project. If you're doing the same thing, one way you could make this even easier is pop these four bolts loose, one, two, three, four, on the grill and pull the grill off. Now the grill comes off similar to the dash panel on the inside like I showed you, you can see right down in there, it's just got those clips. Let me actually show you from behind here, right there. It's hard to see, but just squeeze those with pliers if you have to and the grill should slide out after you unbolt these. So now I'll show you where to ground it. I'm doing that bolt right there on the bottom of this support. It doesn't really matter where you ground it, just test it to make sure it's gonna work. So you can see I kind of have like extension wire hooked up here because this isn't long enough, but I'll just prove that is a proper ground. So just verify that wherever you're grounding it, it doesn't matter where it is, just test and make sure that it's gonna work. Make sure it's a proper ground. So to make my installation easier, I decided I am gonna go ahead and take the grill out. And as you can see, I took the four bolts out here and I've went ahead and unclipped each of these. Like I said, there's one out there, one out there, and then four right here in the middle. And all you do is just pinch that clip with a pair of pliers. You can see I'm using a pair of bit smoother pliers. These are kind of old and worn, but just pinch it and kind of push it into while you do it with one hand and then with the other pull out on the grill and as you'll see out here you start on the bottom start on the bottom clips and the reason for that is you have this tab right here behind where these bolts were so you're supposed to pull up kind of flip it upwards and then pull it off i'm going to use two hands just to make sure i don't drop it I've got that set over out of the way in a safe place. And now I'm going to go and mount my light bar up here. And I'm trying to decide where exactly. But once again, this is uh, custom for my own application. But I will go ahead and show how to route the wires. But I think that's going to be it since the rest of it all relies on how each individual person is going to do it for themselves. So. The way that I routed my wire, as you saw earlier, it comes through this and I actually tucked mine into this until down here where electrical tape covers back up the crack. Once I got there, I tucked that wire underneath. Um, if you kind of feel around with your hands and look really closely, you will feel like a gap between here where this goes. I put my wire along with that and it comes out down in there. And then I ran my wire. Let me see if you can find it right here. Right here, you can see it comes out with that plug once again, or with that wiring harness once again. And it comes around and then I tucked it underneath this metal plate here and ran it just completely underneath that plate to avoid any heat from any of these parts melting it. So then you see it comes out right down there. And actually another thing you will see is there's a ground point. So if you're struggling to find a ground for your fog lights, maybe that one didn't work for you, ground it right here. That's a ground point right there. That's a factory ground. And there might be one on the other side too. You'll just have to look. I would recommend ordering the fog lamp kit if you want the OEM ones the same installation process basically um, it probably comes with instructions to help you route those wires down here but once again you'll have to buy these bumper caps which come in the kit so just keep that in mind so I figured I'd at least show where I ended up putting my um, light bar instead of the fog light and I'll show you I use these two brackets these are actually horn mounting brackets from harbor freight horns uh, i never used the horns but i had the brackets so i kind of drilled out these holes in the right position and used that just put something together here on both sides and that's the final position i did decide to go behind the grill just because these 
were too tall to make the light bar actually fit in this gap and they're made of aluminum so I can't chop them and weld them shorter so I just did the next best thing it gives off really good light back here still so I'll show you all how it turns out all right guys here's the final result you can see this middle section in the grill covers it up a little bit but that's okay it's good for what I'm looking for it to do I'll try and get some at least a picture of it at night to show y'all how it turns out then. But I really like the look of that. Looks really clean. Don't see any sort of wiring. It's all hidden. Really nice result. And you can see it turn on and off with the fog lamp switch in here. So you can see on the wall out there barely. And it turns on and off. a really nice really cool result and i really like that's just hitting this oem switch all right so i'm going to show you all the uh, result at night this is um hold on there this is just the parking lights on see there's the fog lights or the light bar so it's not bad with the headlights on it's hard to tell on camera but it still does something uh you can't see it in real life. There's pine trees further out there that's lighting up. There you go. So it makes a pretty big difference. I really like it. I'll show you the outside view one more time. It looks pretty sweet. I really like how this turned out. how it's just so hidden up there when it's off super cool so once again thanks for watching i hope this video was uh, helpful to you and if you have any questions about the whole process just leave a comment and i'll try to respond